what up? So today I'm going to show you how to make a patch using embroidery and a punch needle. Cool. sponsored by Skillshare. So here's all the stuff I'm going to use. The first thing I'm going to do is trace out the image onto my fabric. So I traced my hoop and then I actually just grabbed my laptop with the image to the size I wanted it and I put it up underneath the fabric and just traced along it like it was a light board. Board? Board, 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 board. So with that all traced out, you're going to loosen up your hoop, let the inner hoop fall on the table, put the fabric on top, put the other outer hoop on top, tighten it a little bit. Just enough so that you can tighten up the fabric all the way around, around, and you're good to go. So I have this punch needle. I like it because you can adjust the length of the needle. I'm gonna set this at three and go ahead and load in the the floss. If I can get this in the hole, just get it in, just get it in the story of my life. All right. So with that in, you can take that end of the punch needle and get some of your embroidery floss. And cut it off and load it into that wire and then you pull all the way through so it comes out to the tip of the needle and there's another little hole I got it in first try oh good job bud and then you're gonna load it through the wire again and pull the floss through with that you're good to go I have a more in-depth video if you want to check that out but first thing I was gonna do is test and see if this will even work with the fabric that I have and yeah looks like it's gonna work so, now to decide if I'm going to do that first, the punch needle, or the, do the board thing with the red. And I decided the board thing with the red, so I went and loaded up the needle, threaded the, the needle, put a knot on the end, it just came up from the bottom, pulled up, and I'm going to go along the edges of the text, so it kind of flows like I'm writing it. And done. So to finish it off on the back side, I just separate the thread into two sections and tie a little knot in the back and then cut off the excess. Scissor snip. For this next part, I'm actually going to separate the thread so I just have one single strand of the six and I'm going to tie a knot in the end just like last time and I'm going to use this to make like the detail work. Some little spots where I missed on that first go around. And with that all done, I just went back to the normal six strands and I noticed that like it kind of warped. And that's mostly because I didn't have a stabilizer in the back, like a backing. But we're gonna make it work anyways. So I flip it around and from the back we're gonna start with the punch needle. That way that the loopy side is on the front. So I just went ahead and went all the way around. There's a shot from, from the bottom. You can see how it just like leaves little loops. Those shots some nice loops. There you got there, you got. So when it was all done, I just cut it off cleaned it up a little bit, added some rug glue to the back to hold it into place so it won't unzip, and we're going to go ahead and let that dry. In the meantime, I want to try another patch with this little S, so I just cut a little gothic S, and then trace it onto another piece of paper, put it back on, and moved it slightly so that it had like kind of like a 3D look, and then traced it all the way around. Then I transferred that onto some felt, but when I flipped around, you can't really see it, and we needed to see that, so I took my computer again, moved it so I just had a white screen. I'm going to put that on and turn off the light so that we can trace it. That way we can work from the back when we're doing the punch needle. So, and right off the back, you can kind of feel that it wasn't working super well, and you can kind of see it like started not really holding. So I thought maybe if I tried it again, but this time if I coated the felt with some of that rug glue, maybe it would hold my loops a little bit better. So we're going to go ahead and try that. So I'll fill it all up and we're going to go ahead and let that dry. The first patch is all dry now. And so we flip it around, we can see some spots that aren't very good. They aren't covered all the way. So we're going to come back through and do some filler work. Then once again, we're going to have to coat it and let it dry. So the needle at level three was a little too tall. So we're going to go ahead and snip them. And then shear it like a cute little sheep. Oh, it's such a cute little sheep. Just shave me on down. Snip, snip. Snip, 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 snip. And with it all sheared down, you can kind of read it. It kind of looks like it says boned and not bored. So I'm gonna try to fix that with this white thread and try to fix my little spot right there that was a little too thick. That made it look like it said boned. 
And it still kind of looks like Bone Ball, so I'm kind of okay with that. Hello, I'm Bone. The whole inspiration of this patch was actually like those mechanic patches, where it like says their name. So with all done, I just outlined the punch needle part with some embroidery floss, and then I cut it out, and we're gonna work on the edge, but I'm a big silly and I forgot to film that part. But how you do the edge is just sew the needle so your loop goes around the edge. And one of the problems that I had is I cut the bottom edge of the fabric a little bit like further away from the top. The top one was like a lot closer. So I had a really tight one right there. And then to compensate for my shortness, I made the loops a little bit bigger and it made it look kind of goofy. So I thought I could fix it if I took some white thread and just went all the way around the patch around the, that white punch needle edge and it looked a little bit better. But to clean up the red loops, I put some glue on the back and kind of mushed it down and that seemed to help out a bit and it could have been a lot cleaner but overall I'm pretty stoked on it. I like to add pill and stick backing instead of the iron on backing to mine and so I just cut out a size that would fit, peeled off the first layer, smooshed it on to it and then I cut around the edges and then how you apply it is you actually just turn it back around there's another layer that you peel off that will expose the sticky side then you can just mush that into place and this holds pretty well, but if you wash it, it will probably fall off. So I just stitched it onto place so it will hold even tighter. And there you go. Got a cute little patch. If you guys want a little board patch, but you don't want to make it, I actually have these ones available in my store. And the board actually looks like board, not boned. And up next, I'll show you how to make this patch. But first, Strudel has something to tell you. So, a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. What up, a doop boop, Skillshare. I know what you're thinking. What is Skillshare? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. One of my favorite things about Skillshare is how each course is outlined. You have reviews, discussions, and project resources at your fingertips. And below the video, you have a list of all the other classes by that instructor. So you must ask yourself, what do you want to learn today? Maybe it's logo design. There are endless classes for you. Included are some Skillshare originals, where you can only find them here. Such as this one. And this one. Drawing as a self-discovery, five ways to start. Or perhaps you'd like to learn how to mask your videos so you can put your cat's face on your head. Or maybe embroidery, how to add dimension to your pieces. Or perhaps you want to learn how to animate things so you can make an animation of a cat and do a dumb voice and a weird accent in it. Regardless of if you are a beginner, pro, or dabbler, Skillshare has you covered. And it's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. It's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. Skillshare is doing something super cool. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership. So you can explore your creativity today. So remember when I coated that felt with that rug glue? Well, it's all dry and I'm gonna try to make the punchy work. And it was working really well, but I had to push so hard and like the rubber glue like made it bow weird. And so I just don't think that's the way to do it. So I moved on to just a white canvas the tried and true, and it worked super well. So with that, cool. Cleaned it up in a little bit of places, a little bit of places, a little bit. What, is that English? Are you even speaking English at this point? Anyways, I painted the rug glue in the stitches. This little bunny rabbit kept on trying to jump on my lap. And yeah, just finished painting it off, let it dry. And now time to add the details, like the little drop shadow looking 3D thing. So I drew that on with pencil. I want to fill it in with this like fake fur stuff. So I just put it into place and kind of cut out these shapes and started just trying to shape them while they're on there using the scissors to cut them as close as I could. Just little by little I got them how I wanted. So with it all cut out, time to just sew them into place. So I use this pink embroidery floss to do a little split stitch and I did not like it. Reverse, reverse. Crisscross. So, just undid it all with them scissors, and time to do it again. But this time I used like a gold, a gold embroidery floss looking thing. I could tell I already liked it a little small. So I went all the way around making sure they're in place, and then did the outline edges, because at first I didn't think I was going to do the outline edges. 
but I really liked how it looked. There's a cute little close up of the split stitch, so you just go down. Then when you come up, you actually go through the stitch you just made. I think it'd be fun to make like a embroidery course where I go through like all the basics and like a bunch of different stitching techniques. But one thing holding me back is I don't really know what to price that at. So if you guys want to leave in a comment what you think, or like I guess what you'd be willing to pay for like a little embroidery course, that would be very, very helpful. So after the split stitch, I just went around with a chain stitch, which is like, I had never done a chain stitch before and was super surprised at how easy it was. And it's like, by far, I think my favorite stitch. All you have to do is you come up, then when you make your down stitch, you want to put it next to or in the hole that you just came up, but hold on to the thread with your other hand. So there's like this little loop. Then you're going to come up through that loop and that's what's going to hold it into place. Then you're going to push it down again next to that up stitch and up through the little loop and then down through that same loop next to your first stitch. To end it, you can come up and then instead of coming down through the loop, you just come down outside a loop and that will hold it into place. And then if you want to start again, you just come up through that same loop and this time down through that loop. Honestly, super easy, surprisingly super easy and looks really cool. Wow, is that chain made out of string? What? what, what? So with that all done, I just cleaned it up, added on that rug glue, and we're gonna cut it out. And this time I filmed it. So that's 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 a good job, Brian. You got, you, you have one job. It's to film the stuff you make. Uh, you you're doing you're doing great. And so I cut it out with like leaving like probably like a half an inch. And we're gonna fold that onto itself into the back so it's not seen. So I added some more rug glue and then cut these little snips all around the border. That way I could just fold them over and they would stick to itself, the, the like fresh rug glue, and it would hold in place, like such. Wow, wow. So I wanted to place it on felt and have a felt border. So what I did is I just added some fabric glue. I probably could have just used rug glue again, but I used that fabric glue and then mushed it on there. Oh, mush, mush. Like a bunch of sled dogs. Sled dogs, are they called ski dogs? I don't know. Then cut out the border again and done. When I posted like the final shot on the Instagram story, people come out saying it looked like cake. So I thought it'd be funny to take like another day or I don't even know how long I took forever to make this little cake. And yeah, it was so good. Wow, what a good looking cake good for this 10 second shot. <laughs> cool. Alright, so be sure to like and subscribe, go ahead and hit that bell notification, and yeah, thanks so much for watching, and thanks so much for our patrons.